climate change is not something that's far away, but is happening now and is going to accelerate in, in the coming decades. It's not going to take a year or two to take down industry that's been poisoning us for all my life. Climate informatics is an emerging area of research that's really trying to take advantage of um, a lot of technology changes in, in the recent decades. So we're seeing all sorts of opportunities coming from artificial intelligence, uh, new kinds of sensors, um, remote sensing technologies like, like satellite imagery that are giving us a lot of new information about how climate change is currently impacting our cities and is going to continue to do so in, in the future. And so climate informatics is trying to figure out how do we best leverage those technologies to support uh, local decision making around climate adaptation. So our understanding of climate change starts with treating it as an equity and justice concern. We know, and, and all the science tells us, that uh, the impacts of climate change will be distributed unevenly. And, and the most marginalized communities and, and folks will be those who experience the effects most dramatically. Anytime we take the complicated sort of world around us and try to, try to represent it through numbers, um, we're making decisions, we're, we're making abstractions. These abstractions about the world are useful. They help us think at scale. They help us sort of understand problems that we wouldn't um, be able to otherwise. But, but we need to remember that, that when we do so, we're always making decisions. We're always choosing to measure some things, include some things, and not include others. And so what we're really trying to do at the Toronto Climate Observatory is sort of understand from a human-centered perspective what do different groups around the Greater Toronto Area need to know and want to know about what the region is going to be like in the next 30 to 50 years? Our, our, our biggest strength is, is our interdisciplinary collaborations. We have faculty across all three campuses of U of T. We have historians, anthropologists, chemists, physicists, engineers, computer scientists involved. And part of our argument is that it really does take that diversity of perspectives um, diversity of ways of thinking about the problem to come together in a really sustained collaboration to, to ask hard questions. I grew up on the Amjanong First Nation Reservation. It is located close to Sarnia, Ontario. We are um, a very close community of about 800. We are also impacted by a lot of petrochemical facilities that surround our community on all sides. It's been a dream of mine and my sibling to better understand uh, what is happening when there is an alarm happening or we get a notification that there's been a spiller release or an accident or something. Yeah, the sirens went off and then there was like an announcement when we parked, we heard it. I just could not believe how big that flame was. When there was a spill or release before Pollution Reporter app, you had to call this office uh, in Toronto. This person would interrogate you with all these questions when the community deserves the answers. Sometimes when the spill or release is really bad, um, there are legal challenges for that company, but the ministry investigates years after the actual incident and will come knocking on your door two years later. Now, uh, people can record what they can in real time, and then they are also uh, able to like access it whenever they want for their own records. Community members are not expected to understand the whole workings of Chemical Valley, but like if you were to be standing on the reserves and you see something from a distance, like a flare, and you don't know what company that is, so you can't really report it, you can pull up your app and see which company is in that direction and who is responsible for it. What's more than inspiring for me about working with the Techno Science Research Unit here at University of Toronto is that I think we got the attention of oil companies and they should be worried about the tools we 
are gonna walk away with. The changes that happen due to climate change cause things like extreme heat events, uh, unstable weather conditions, they increase the populations of vectors like ticks and mosquitoes, and all of these factors affect human health. AI and machine learning methods allow for us to take advantage of all of this data and its complexity. And as a result, we can make our analyses more powerful, more accurate, and they better represent the changes that we see in our environment. In my research, we take data on people uh, from all different sources, healthcare interactions, demographic data, social, economic data. We also take data from the environment and we put all this information together in order to estimate the probability or the likelihood of experiencing poor health outcomes. Working closely with people in cities, they'll tell us that they're considering transit changes that will reduce uh, emissions or they're considering a different source of energy for buildings and we'll be able to simulate those changes and actually tell them the impact on health in their cities. So in our models, we estimate the impact of climate interventions, not just in the overall populations, but specifically among marginalized groups. And we show the impact of special attention to those groups, how it can reduce some of the disparities that we see in society. It's a core part of all of our outputs of our models and in our discussions with decision makers using these models. We're really trying to think about a, a human-centered, local, place-based approach to climate informatics that, that centers questions of, of equity and justice. We've seen uh, very clearly how powerful data can be in um, ensuring that policies are enacted. This, this data sovereignty is more than just Amgenon, it's, it's every other community out there and, the, and those companies are the same companies impacting us all. So they won't have to worry about dealing with one community anymore, it'll be like nations they will have to deal with.